How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation, time to get that imagination all cranked up, get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Kenichi Sonoda. And if you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. He is a wonderful artist. I uh, originally found out his work from uh, it was uh, old... Uh, was it Cartoon Network series? Uh, Gunsmith Cats, I believe is the name of it. Um, that was a really, really great little fun series. I remember watching uh, fondly back in the early 2000s. That was a really fun one. Um, really fun characters. He just has a, a great, uh, wonderful style that uh, isn't, I mean, obviously it's kind of uh, that anime uh, Japanese culture, but I feel like it's got a little more of, uh, what is it? Uh, Astro Boy Ozoka to Oh, I can't remember the name. I'm going to butcher it. Um, but just a really fun kind of playful uh, play on the early cartoon style with more of a Japanese feel. So let's take a look at some of um, his work here. Really fun characters, great posing, uh, really great silhouettes here. Uh, I really like this one. I think the uh, that's a great running pose for sure. Uh, great coloring and uh, interesting choices. There. I like this uh, little antenna things there too um, really just oh I love the color and just the overall feel of his style for sure it doesn't feel like everything um, a lot of things these days feel very like they iterate on the iteration on the iteration on the iteration so you get kind of a um, homogenization of uh, work and I really like his stuff because I feel like it's it goes back to kind of the origins or at least when it was still um, becoming what it is today and uh, just a great style. I really like this one. This one reminds me a lot of uh, the game Space Harrier and just a really interesting um, layout and composition overall as well. So definitely check out more stuff from him. I'll throw um, some links in the description below. I think he's vastly underrated and just a phenomenal um, genius in, in uh, manga and uh, illustration work as well. Just, I really like this one. There's, there's just uh, something really pleasant about the simplicity of this one. Just really lovely. Great color choices. Um, really nice silhouette and everything there too. This one's just just gorgeous piece there too. I really uh, I like the, the uh, grouping of these two characters and that one and just the posing of the legs to have them kind of flow through one to the other to the other. That's really nice too. So like I said, definitely uh, check out more stuff from him. I'll throw some links in the description below. But I did want to share a quote that I was able to find from him. And I thought this one was just really uh, kind of get to that, that harkens well on the thing that I get from his work. It's just a real playfulness. And um, there's kind of a, a brevity or a joy to his work that I feel like is really um, seated below it. And he said, often I think of how wonderful it would be if I could just take a reel of film out of my head. And I can definitely relate to that quote. I think there's 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 times where I have an idea, and even if I work on it, you know, just the, the particular place that I'm at in my journey, I still feel um, like there's a lot of steps I need to go before things get realized to the, to the original ideas that I have in my head. And I think that's part of the journey, is to hopefully someday um, get to that point where you can get as close as you can get to um, realizing that original imagination or creativity spark inside your brain so let's go ahead and get back into some animation we're going to continue doing um, some work with this cavalry rig it's a free rig you can grab over at i believe it was cadnav.com i'll throw a link in the description below if you guys want to play around with this rig as well and if you're not familiar with what we'll be doing for the rest of the video um this is a uh, part two of uh, kind of the walk a day we were doing with the cavalry rig yesterday where we did the horse so i'll go ahead and play that while i'm talking here too and again there is a little bit of lag so apologies about that but it'll come uh and what we'll be doing today is we'll just attack the uh main top character here and get that because as you can see nothing's really we just parented him to um, the horse itself uh, so we'll do some counter animation there do a little bit of movement in this little spear thing here and just pose that out um, so it'll probably be a little bit of a shorter one today. We'll see. Um, 
But uh, the main goal of doing these videos each and every day is to hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you to go off and create your own unique and wonderfully imaginative content each and every day to take another step in your journey towards mastering whatever medium it is that you're passionate about. So I love you guys lots and let's go ahead and get uh, playing here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to turn off the controllers for a horse. But the only thing is I think we have the controllers of the body stuck in there. So I'm going to leave those on for now. So we'll just attack these guys individually here. I kind of want to puff out the chest. I think that would be more fun here. Which is going to end up being what rotate Z here. So we'll puff that out a little bit more. And we'll counter it in the hip. Which is rotate X on the hip. Rotate Z in the chest. Alright, that's fine. And the neck controller here. Just a teeny bit. Is there a ponytail on at all? No. Okay. Just want to create more interesting pose if I can here. This just thinking maybe there should be one for the uh, the sleeve here, but there really isn't. So maybe we'll pull that in a little bit more here. And then we'll go ahead and rotate it upward little bit here as well. Not too much, but a little more in the hip there. And I think we'll weigh it down a little bit more. We'll pull that back there. Okay, and let's see this hand. It's okay, but I think I want to pull this back a little bit more here too. I realize we're not going to be able to do a perfect um, grip there, but I think we can do something a little bit better than what we have right now. Or maybe not. Let's see. I want to flatten that out, but it doesn't seem like it wants to. It's rotating right there. Hmm, that's funky. Okay, I guess the tips of these fingers work uh, a little bit differently, so we'll work around that. Said we got about halfway with this pose from what uh, just the default one is that we got to work with. Let me get rid of here. Um, let's go ahead and rotate that out this way. And again, we're going to get some intersection there. Feels a little more like it's holding something there. So I want to enter and decide is this, this a geometry breaking or is this supposed to be like a piece of armor that's covering that hand? I think it's supposed to be armor, so that's okay, because otherwise, if it was a hand geometry, that'd be very bizarre. We'll stick with that for right now. And then let's just uh, push this finger pose a little bit more here, too. Again, I'm not going to get too tied up in doing all this stuff just yet, but I want to start off with something a little bit better. Hmm. Pull, that, uh, pull that one back a little bit more here, just so we get a more secure kind of hand pose on there. We'll try not to intersect with the geometry too much if we can avoid it. And again, most of this stuff is never really going to be seen, but you want to try and get, develop good um, practices for your workflow so that you're hitting all that stuff and not cheating stuff too much. Okay. And so let's do here a little bit more. Then I want to think of going down and over. Don't really like the way that we 
So let's go ahead and save our file real quick. We are using Autodesk Maya 2014 for today's video. For more information on that and all the stuff we've talked about so far, check out the links in the description below. And again, let's uh, just go ahead and grab the chest and the hips here. And we'll lock in those ones. Just hit S on our keyboard there. And hit what, seven here. So we want to counter animate uh, that hip a little bit. So it kind of stays a little more straight there. Loosening up here as well. And I'm going to push the hips a little bit more because um, I want to get a little bit of that change in the spine here as well. And back. Because this is too over the top right now. But if we take the hip here and push it a little bit more that way, a little bit more that way, just sort of that way, and back, and we'll even that out a little bit more. Too much on the chest, so just want a little bit there. So we'll play around with it until we get it working right here. And then we'll probably amp up the hip back up a little bit after toning this down. Let's see. getting there. I'm not sure if it's perfect just yet. Now it's sitting there. Alright, we still have a ways to go and I think I'm probably going to tone it down if we're looking at it from the side angle versus the back. So let's see. Okay, and then we'll look at rotating X here. And forward a little bit and back. Forward a little bit. Back. Forward a little bit. there hopefully in the chest and the hip area apologies if uh, I'm looking a little slow tonight I've got uh, my wrist is kind of acting up again today after a long work day yesterday and the day before so I think my workflow is probably a little bit off so apologies in advance on that let's see Just trying to add a little bit of movement into that chest 
remember it's not like we're doing a rotate z and this is really just the rotate x it's just the orientation of the chest is separate from the way that the hips are orient oriented oriented to see if this will work. I'm sure we'll play around with it a little bit more, but just so we can maybe get a little bit of lift off there. And then back to where we started. Let's look at our transit Y there. Again, we'll try to balance it out from where it was so that we get a fairly good amount of up and down there. down maybe a little more on the up let's see maybe just a little bit less overall but still have a little bit Do a little bit of translate here. something like that. Usually 10 frames back from that before the 6 would be the key, right? Yes. Let's watch it. 
points from that would be 39. So I'll throw another one here. So 14 frames from that would be 46. Throw another one here. And we have a win at 400. Alright, I think it'll be something. favoring uh, one side there. Bring that back. This should be more extreme there. And this should be the lower. Oops. Okay. Let's watch it now. So I did a little bit of slide there too. Alright, I think it's a little much from this angle, so we'll scale it back. But I think the idea is working. Seems probably too much there, too. Let's scale that back here. All right, now let's start looking at the feet. to uh, clean that up and get something a little bit better working. So let's look at these original poses. Maybe favor it a little bit this way. Yeah, that probably seems a little too extreme, so we'll scale it back a little bit. Just uh, grab that, created a new layer, and turned the visibility off just in case you were wondering how to do that because we didn't know there. And let's look at the 
this, but and I think we just want to universally push that. intersecting too much through that cloth there which is doing a little bit that way so I'll universally just push it a little more out all right and now let's grab both of them Just so we get a little bit of up and down there. And let's see how it feels. Alright, and let's look at that now. are a little too high so let's scale those back down a little bit more and yeah, probably just minimize everything a little bit more all right and let's look at point seven here and we'll rotate our feet uh, this way maybe so this way out a little bit though Sway that way, 49 that way, and back. Alright, I think those might be a little too pushed at the extremes there. I mean, just rotate Y, right? So let's uh, scale that back a little bit more. I feel uh, okay. That swing out there feels a little too forced. So let's see that now. scale it back just a little bit more here too. So I want to do a little bit of rotate up and down here too. Get that to go down. That will go up. Down there. Up here. Obviously, it's a little too much, so I'll scale it back. But I think that's starting to starting to work a little bit. And bring this back. And let's see it now.
5. one to be where it's swinging out there this will swing in it's gonna make it here okay there we go let's look at the other side here So it'll be start at three again. And let's uh, minimize the amount of movement here. And balance it out a little bit better. because it's getting a little choppy when I'm playing it, but it feels all right. All right, now let's grab this guy here. Let's do a little bit of move here. This one right into where it is on the hand. Just hit insert to uh, move that, and then that should allow me to rotate. So I'm rotating more from there. Okay, so I'm going to set this key here. And the other one was hitting at 7, so I want to hit these kind of Still get a little bit of give from there too. And up here, down, and I'm sure I'll have to tweak this still a little bit more. But this way, we're kind of just playing off the movement we already have on the wrist by by adding that locator that we added yesterday. Um, it allows us to do a little bit of give on the weapon itself. Make 
sure if I'm doing this in the right direction. I might have to invert it. Uh, all the way down from there. So frames per minute, 54. And there's one more. So that's frame three right now. Okay. I don't feel like uh, I balanced it out very well. We just need a little bit of it just to help it feel a little loose. Here. Okay, and let's play it through here. Um, hold on a sec, I'm going to try to play blasting it and see if I get a better frame rate. One sec. Uh, find the pause button for me. Alright. Uh, it's a little bit better frame rate, so I can see if it's all playing. Um, sometimes, especially with um, rigs that are more complicated, that have more controllers, as you get further and further putting in more in animation info, even if it started out being pretty light, um, you can get a little bit of lag and stuff in there. So it's nice to always do a quick little play blast and see how you're looking at everything. And that feels like it's it's working a little bit better than uh, what we were seeing before. I think I'd like to do a little bit of forward and back probably in there. Not a lot, but just something so we'd see a little bit of forward and back movement through there. And then I want to get into that other hand. And then let's see how we're doing on time. Uh, yeah, I think we still got some time here, so... I'm just going to pause this one sec. Okay, just so I can, didn't have to do that. All right, so I wanted to do a little bit of back and forth, I think, on here, just a teeny bit. seven frames though, seven to 14. I want to do little circles, so I think I'll have to do seven frames. All right, so we'll do one here and there. We'll go to 14, we just have to do just a teeny bit of this then if we're doing it every seven frames, but we want to offset that we have the up and down on every seven frames, so we're gonna have to do a forward and back at that same, um, not on the same key, we'll do them offset a few few frames um, but keep with that same speed there so we can get that little bit of circular um, movement going let's see if I have some yeah there we go okay and I'm gonna push this back more punch another one through there and then go back to where we were okay so Just a little bit of movement. We don't need a whole lot here. Just so we have a little bit of forward and back there. A little more circular movement for that there. And let's look at, uh, let's go ahead and save our file again. Remember, it's always good to save multiple versions and to save often. And let's look at this hand here. So I'll we'll set that.
we just have our seven frames there. Up, down. I don't know why I was trying to overcomplicate that. Same space. We take that. For some reason, there's a double key there, so it's getting a little bit of a jump. some work. This one's a little too far down, so we'll go a little bit up there. This one's a little too far up. A little bit down there. And I'm pretty sure it's because it needs to do some side to side, so maybe I'll leave the up and down um, where it is for right now. And let's look more side to side. Super fantastic, but a little bit more movement. Might need to reduce that. Fourteen, we got it twenty-eight. Just get rid of a few of those too. That'd be better. Yeah, we'll grab some of them instead. Still need some work there. Uh, from this angle, it'll still be a little bit more corrected. Right. So sometimes you got to figure out what camera angle you're going with and what time constraints you have to work with and everything, too. So you've got to keep that stuff in mind sometimes. should be translated forward a bit more. And that should go a little bit back. This should go a little bit more forward. And then back there too. Alright, so let's look at it from this side. There we go. See, it looks like it's not perfect, but it feels like it's actually holding on to that uh, portion of the reins there. too much on that rotate X and scale it back. Anything from this forward and that, and let's see how we're doing. Alright, so it gives us a little bit of give um, there and makes it feel like it's actually holding on to something. Again, this is nothing super perfect, but uh, definitely gives that uh, appearance and that feel that it's actually holding on there. And then the other thing I wanted to do 
it's just a little bit in the fingers here as well. So I'm going to grab all of these fingers here as soon as I can actually click through and select them. I'm going to do a little bit of gluing on those fingers there too. So again, let me just save our file real quick. that's off a little bit so we'll have to go into these portions now the middle parts of the finger so what we want to do is do kind of the opposite stretch them out here and stretch them out there and go back okay and let's look at the thumb Nothing super perfect, but getting all that stuff moving. Okay, and let's look at um, what we were doing. Cool. For some reason, I got switched into uh, Paint by Wands. For some reason, I was stuck up there on. Uh, faces mode instead of an object mode. I'm sure it's the wrong terminology, but we gotta switch it back. And my muscle memory is a little off today for I'm at a different desk. So I can tell there's certain things that are just a little bit. So again what we're gonna do here is just grab everything. We're just gonna give a little bit of looseness to this hand. Nothing exciting. tips here. And if I can actually grab them, that'd be nice. <laughs> and we'll uh, take away on the frame. We'll push that forward a frame. So just kind of some keep alive on here. Nothing super fancy. So just so we get some movement on those fingers. And then we'll do it again. Make sure there's just some kind of movement in there so we don't get that pixel lock in there. And let's look at that thumb. I think 
the last thing I want to do is just do a little bit on the neck here. Uh, maybe we could do a little bit with the shoulders. I'm trying to play around with those. They're big enough that that might be fun to add a little bit. So I'll set that there. Zoom here in just a second. Alright. Zoom in a little. And we'll just bring it all here. And we'll look at the other side. There. Oh, there we go. And we're going the wrong way. That's not it. Oh. And this one might be a little too much. Just so we have a little bit of give there. And we'll go ahead and push those forward one frame just to mix up our timing a little bit more. Just so we get a little bit of movement in there. And then let's look at the neck. And we'll set that. Forward, back, forward, back. Just so we have a little bit of movement in there. Again, nothing super fancy, but just so it has a little bit of keep alive there. in the head, 10, hmm. I don't think I like the F1 watch so much, let's see if the head works a little better, yeah we can get a little bit there, so we'll set it there, and we'll tilt it a little bit that way. So it has a little bit of lean there to it. A little bit that way. A little bit that way. And then back to where we were. Again, not that we need a lot of, but just, just a hint of tilt to the head from side to side. And a little goes a long way here too. So let's see how.
grab everything here and we'll push it off one frame just so we get a little better of a loop. off and I think we'll do a play, play blast for watching this to see how it actually plays uh, so one second here all right so I think that works um, definitely could polish it up a little bit more but I think we've got some decent movement in there and again it's still not perfect frame rate while playing it this way we get a little bit of lag but a little bit better than what we were getting before so we could actually see how it would uh, play out there um, so let's take a look back at where we started. We're looking at the beautiful work of Kenichi Sonoda, and he said, uh, Often I think of how wonderful it would be if I could just take a reel of film out of my head. I think that's totally true. I think that stuff all the time. I'm sure you guys do too. And it's just about taking uh, more steps in your journey, learning more, um, practicing those skills, taking uh, chances, and learning and growing and being okay with failure and just uh, learning from your mistakes and learning from your successes and trying to get to that point where someday, maybe down the road, uh, you can get that stuff that you imagine in your head to be as close um, to reality when you create. So I love you guys lots. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, I'm not quite sure what we'll do tomorrow. I know I've been saying doing some lip sync, but got to find a good clip that I like and I haven't uh, done that yet. So if time permits, That'll be our next shot. If not, we'll just uh, do some body mechanics. I was thinking trying to do like a cool pole slide. Like, uh, I don't know, for some reason I've always been a fan of, I think it's Glenn Keane's uh, Tarzan, where he does this slide. Uh, it's like a surfing down a vine, and I always wanted to try something like that. So that's been a shot that I've had in mind. But if you guys have ideas, definitely throw them down below. I think there's uh, maybe a day or two difference between when I when you guys see stuff versus when I'm working on it but uh, always happy to try out new different rigs and new ideas that you guys come up with as well I'm happy to try and uh, see if I can make videos that might help you or give you ideas or learn what not to do or any of that kind of stuff you're amazing I know you can do it so take another step in your journey uh, and be awesome so I think that'll wrap it up because I'm getting rambly and I'm a little tired today my wrist is still holding up it's a good day. I love you guys lots. And thanks for all the likes and subscribes, and we will see you for some more animation tomorrow.